Hello, welcome to this first topic on network basics. We will talk about the two models that describe the communication procedure on IT system. The first one is OSI model. This model is a logical model. It stands for Open System Interconnection. It was designed to describe the function of the communication system by dividing the communication procedure into smaller components. As we can see in this table, the OSI model is a seven layer model. You have application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, and the last one, physical layer. This model is a logical model. The TCP IP model is a concise and concrete implementation on network system. The TCP IP model was designed by the Department of Defense in 1960. It stands for Transport Control Protocol, Internet Protocol. As you can see in this table, the TCP IP model is a four layer model. You have application layer, transport layer, internet layer, and network access layer. As you can see, for each layer, you have different kind of protocol. For example, for application layer, you have HTTP and HTTPS protocol. For transport layer, you have TCP and UDP protocol. For internet layer, you have IPv4 and IPv6 protocol. And for network access layer, you have Ethernet token ring protocol. In the next section of this course, we will work with several protocols. So it is important to identify in which layer a protocol belongs to. That's all for this session. Let's move on to the next. Hello, in this session, we will briefly review the basics of IP addresses and binary system. So let's start with the first point. Binary number system use only two values, 0 and 1. 1 OT is equal to 8 bit and equal to 1 byte. So it is important to note that 1 byte is equal to 1 OT, but 1 byte is not equal to 1 bit. The next point, 1 bit can be equal to 0 or 1. The minimum value of 1 OT is 8 bit all set to 0. This value is equal to 0 in decimal system. The maximum value of 1 octet is 8 bit all set to 1. And this value is equal to 255 in decimal system. And from 0 to 255, we have 256 possible value. This is equal to 2 to the power of 8. For the next point, we have two types of IP address, IPv4 and IPv6. IPv4 contains 32 bits. This value is equal to 4 multiplied by 8 bits. We already know that 8 bits is equal to 1 octet. So this value, 32 bit, is equal to 4 octet. And an IPv6 contains 128 bit. This value is equal to 16 octet. IPv6 was developed to increase the number of IP. And with IPv6, we can have up to 2 to the power of 128 IP addresses. Why with IPv4, we can have up to 2 to the power of 32 possible IP. IPv4 is represented with 4 octets separated with a dot. Here we have an example of IPv4. 192.168.1.2 The minimum 
value of on IPv4 is all of the set to zero. That means zero for time. And the maximum value for an IPv4 is 255 for time. And the binary representation of an IPv4 is a group of eight digits repeated for time with x equal to zero or one. Now I will show you an example of how we can convert a binary number to a decimal number. To convert this binary number to decimal number, we take the digit on the right here and we multiply this digit by 2 to the power of 0. The result is 1. And we take the next digit, 0, and we multiply it by 2 to the power of 1. The result is 0. And we take the next digit, 1, and we multiply this digit by 2 to the power of 2. And the result is 4. And we do the same operation for all digits. And the final result is the sum of all intermediate results. This number is the decimal representation of this binary number. That's all for this session. I hope that now you have a good understanding of the basics of IPv4, IPv6 and binary system. Hello, this session is about IPv4 class rule addressing. I will start with some global concept on IPv4. An IPv4 is made of two parts, a network part and a host part. In this example, the three first octet belong to the network part and the last octet belong to the host part. To identify the network part and the host part, we use the concept of mask. A mask is a 32-bit number in which bit set to 1 identify the network part and bit set to 0 identify the host part. In a local area network, there are two IP addresses that we cannot assign to a host. The first IP is the network IP address. This IP identifies the network. It is obtained when all bits of the host part are set to zero. In this example, this IP is a network IP because all bits of the host part are set to zero. The next IP that we cannot assign to a host is a broadcast IP. This IP is used to send broadcast message. It is obtained when all bits of the host part are set to 1. In this example, this IP is a broadcast IP because all bits of the host part are set to 1 and this is equal to 255 in decimal system. In this table, we can see that classful addressing divides the IPv4 space into five classes. A, B, C, D, and E. However, only A, B, and C classes are used for network host. The class D is for multicast purpose and the class E is for research cases. If we analyze the class A, for example, we can see that for the class A here, we have 8 bit for the network part and 24 bit for the host part. And this is the default mask for the class A and this is the range of IP for the class A. And for the class A, we can have up to 2 to the power of 24 minus 2 IP address. This class is used when you have a lot of hosts in your local network. And here, why we remove two IP? Because we remove the network IP and the broadcast IP. If, for example, we compare 
the number of available hosts for the class A and the class C, we can see that for the class C, we can have only 254 available hosts. So this class is for small network. That's all for this session. And I hope that now you have a good understanding of IPv4 classful addressing model. Hello, this session is about CIDR notation. CIDR stands for Classless Interdomain Routing. CIDR notation is a compact representation of an IP address and its associated network mask. With CIDR notation, we can change the size of the mask. That means we can change the size of the network part and the host part. In the previous session on IPv4 classful addressing, the size of the mask was fixed. In the side door notation, we can decide to have more or less bit for the network and the host part. In this example, we have an IP and its associate mask. A compact representation of this IP and this mask is the IP followed by slash 24. The slash 24 means that we have 24 bits in the mask set to 1. And we already know that when a bit in the mask is set to 1, it identifies the network part. Bit set to zero in the mask identify the host part. I also want to show you a particular CID here, this one, 000 slash zero. This CIDR defines an IP block containing all possible IP addresses. It also represents the default route. On this table, we have some examples of CIDR notation. For the first line, for example, slash 24, it means we have 24 bits for the network part and 8 bits for the host part. And this is the mask for this CIDR. And we can only have 254 hosts. For the next one, slash 25, it means we have 25 bits for the network part, only 7 bits for the host part, and this is the mask for this cider, and we only have 126 hosts for this cider. That's all for this uh, cider notation session. Let's move on to the next. Hello, this session is about reserved IP addresses. The first type is private IP addresses. They are used only on local area network. Here we have different range of private IP addresses depending on the class that we can assign to a host in a local area network. The next type is class D. It is used for multicast. As we can see on the right, multicast means send a request to a group of hosts. Unicast means send a request to a single host. Broadcast means send a request to all hosts. And anycast means send a request to any host. The next type is class E. It is used for research purpose. The next type is the IP. 255 for time, it is a broadcast IP. The next is the IP 0 for time, it is also known as the default route or unspecified address. The last is all IP that start with 127, they are used for loopback. Loopback is a traffic local to your host. Hello, this session is about NAT and PAD protocol in a local area network. In this local area network, we have two hosts here. Each host has a private IP address. 
and we have a switch here that allow the two hosts to communicate each other. We have here a router with two interfaces. The interface I2 is connected to internet and the interface I1 is connected to the switch. In this LAN, we also have two root tables. Here we have the root table for this host and this root table is for the router. Let's start with this root table. In this root table, if the destination is the local area network, we send the traffic to the target I1, this target. And if the destination is not in the local area network, we send the traffic to this IP. This IP is the gateway. In the root table of the router, if the destination is the local area network, we send the traffic to the interface I1. And if the destination is not the local area network, we send the traffic to internet via the interface I2, this one. In this local area network, if a host wants to send a request to internet, the router will apply two protocols the NAT protocol and the PAD protocol. The NAT protocol stands for Network Address Translation. The goal of this protocol is to translate the private IP to a public IP. This is the root table that the router will generate to translate these two private IP to this public IP to reach Internet. In addition to this protocol, the router will also apply the PAD protocol. PAD protocol stands for Port Address Translation. The goal of the PAD protocol is to translate the local port to the PAD port. Here in this table, the local port is generated by the host. And to ensure the uniqueness of this port, the router will also generate a PAD port. So, by applying the NAT protocol and the PAD protocol, all hosts in the local area network can reach Internet and the router will forward the response back to the right host without any error. Here we have some additional information. The local port is generated by the host. The PAD port is generated by the router to ensure the port uniqueness. The generated port range is in this range. And the port under 1024 are reserved port. For example, the port 80 is for HTTP. And here we have other examples. Two hosts in the same LAN can communicate each other using the private IP without requiring any internet. A gateway IP is used when a host wants to reach internet or another network. That's all for this session and I hope that now you have a good understanding of the main component of a local area network. Hello, in this session we'll talk about public IP addresses. Public IP are managed by five regional internet registries. Regional internet registry allocate block of public IP to local internet registry. They are also known as internet service provider. Here in this map, you have the five regional internet registry that handle public IP around the world. 